which battery will win, 50C or 120C? Welcome back to the channel everyone, my name is Mike and I have way too many hobbies, with RC being one of them. In this video we're going to be comparing an HRB 4S 6000mAh 50C battery with a Huvu 4S 6200mAh 120C battery to see which one comes out on top. The question is, does C rating really matter? We're going to find out. I've been in RC for about six years now. I started off in RC planes and recently moved into surface vehicles. So I do have quite a bit of experience with LiPo batteries. I've always been skeptical of the high C rated batteries. I'm sure some batteries are better than others. I've had experience with higher C rated batteries performing much better than lower ones. In the case of a 120 C battery that we have here with the Huvu, I was a little skeptical. I had just got the Outcast 8S and wanted a set of batteries to run in it. So I purchased these HRB 6000 milliamp 50 C batteries. They perform excellent in my opinion, but I didn't have much to compare it to. So when I wanted to get a second set of batteries, I purchased these ones here. They were a little more expensive. This is a Huvu 4S 6200 milliamp 120 C rated battery. I thought these performed well, so I was extremely excited to get these. 200 more milliamps and the C rating was 120 compared to 50. So what I would expect is that the punch would be much better. When we talk about punch in RC batteries or LiPo batteries in general, we're talking about the ability for the battery to hold its voltage when under load. Running this truck about 10 times on this battery, I was very happy. So when I put these in, I expected it to be even better. That was not the case. Whenever I receive a new LiPo battery, I always weigh them. These batteries weighed 580 grams, which is what was specified by the manufacturer. This battery weighed 540 grams. This stuck out to me. From my experience, higher rated C batteries are always heavier. So how could a 6200 milliamp 120 C battery weigh less than a 6000 milliamp 50 C battery? I don't know. In order to test these, I'm going to use my eye charger and my charging station, and we're gonna do a parallel discharge at 17 amps simultaneously and see what we get. We're gonna stop at certain points and take a look at the voltage at these points. We're gonna look at the internal resistance and also possibly the temperature of the batteries. With that being said, let's get into the test. I started off this test by fully charging each battery. We have the HRB on the left, and the Huvu on the right. As you can see, they're both fully charged. The reason I am able to do a discharge test comparison like this is because my charging station has two 6S 20,000 milliamp LiPo batteries in it that the charger is able to discharge into. So I'm able to discharge these simultaneously at 17 amps to give us a good idea of what the voltage drop is over the course of the discharge. I'm going to be discharging from 4.2 volts to 3.6 volts as I consider this an usable real world range. If you want to check out my charging station, I will post two links up here in the corner so you can see the original build and the modifications I made to it just two years ago. It's been working awesome and gives a lot of flexibility for charging all types of RC batteries. And don't worry, you will not have to sit here and watch it. I will fast forward through and take a couple breaks throughout the discharge to compare the two batteries and how they are reacting to the discharge. As you can see, four minutes into the test, the voltage is slightly higher on the HRB, slightly lower on the Huvu, and the internal resistance is comparable throughout cells with the Huvu having a slightly lower internal resistance. At the seven minute mark, this is where it gets very interesting. You can see the HRB on the left is at 3.8, 3.81 volts, and the Huvu on the right is at 3.7172 volts, almost a tenth of a volt higher for the HRB. At the 10 minute mark, we can see the HRB on the left is at 3.75 volts, and the Huvu on the right is at 3.62 volts. That's a difference of 0.13 volts. That is astounding. We can see that the voltage range between cells is fairly consistent on both packs, slightly less on the HRB. And let's continue. 
by 12 minutes, the HRB is at 3.72 volts, and the HUVU on the right has already reached 3.6 volts, and all cells are beginning to balance. The voltage across cells is consistently the same throughout, and we will continue. At 13 and a half minutes, we can see that the HUVU has already started slowing down, and this is because the charger, when it's balancing cells and it's reached close to its endpoint, will slow the discharge rate. As we can see, the total capacity discharged from the HRB is starting to pull away from the HUVU on the right. All internal resistance seems consistent cell per cell and between both batteries. 17 and a half minutes, the HRB on the left is still going strong at a 17 amp discharge rate. You can see that the total capacity discharged is 1000 milliamps larger than the HUVU on the right. Internal resistance is consistent between cells and consistent between packs. The temperature of the HUVU on the right is approximately 101 degrees, and the HRB on the left is 106 degrees. I am not sure if these batteries were sitting in the same room, so that could mean a little bit of a difference, but in this case, I feel it's negligible. After 20 minutes, we can see the HRB on the left is reaching 3.6 volts, but the most important thing is that we've removed 5,581 milliamps from it, and the HUVU on the right has stopped at 4,026 milliamps. That is a difference of 1,500 milliamps. We have actually exceeded the safe capacity limit given a 6,000 milliamp size battery. So I will restart this and continue to discharge. So after both packs have discharged to 3.6 volts, we can see a staggering difference between the HRB and the HUVU. The HRB had 5,800 milliamps discharged from it, and the HUVU had only 4,026 milliamps discharged from it. That is huge. You could see consistently throughout the discharge that the HRB held its voltage up to 0.13 volts higher. This is shocking. What are my final thoughts? Well, I was shocked, as you are probably too. Before I performed this test, I did run the HUVU 6200 milliamp batteries in my Outcast 8S, and I noticed that they did not feel like they had the punch that these batteries did. I also noticed that the runtime did not seem as long either. This is perfectly reflected in the results that we see in this test. Now I understand this is not an ideal test. There really is no ideal test other than having a way to discharge LiPos simultaneously at a much higher rate, but this is a decent discharge rate to compare them and look at the voltage. The thing that stands out the most to me is the capacity. Now when I first saw this, that these only were able to discharge 4000 milliamps down to 3.6 volts, which I consider to be an usable voltage range, 4.2 to 3.6, I was astounded. I thought this was borderline criminal. How can a company sell a battery advertised as 6200 milliamps, yet when we discharge them to 3.6 volts, we're only getting about 63% of that? Well, the answer is not all batteries are created equal. I did notice that another manufacturer actually recommends discharging their batteries down to 3.2 volts. Now call me crazy, maybe I'm misinformed, but from my understanding of LiPo batteries, you never want to discharge a battery that low. And I was astounded to see that in a actual recommendation by the manufacturer. So 3.6 is the voltage I chose to use in this test. To me, this is an usable voltage, 4.2 to 3.6. Now, just to see what happened if we discharge these down to 3.3 volts, I did that with both of these batteries. And the results were, again, shocking. From 3.6 down to 3.3, I was able to take another 2300 milliamps out of this battery, bringing the total capacity to 6349 milliamps larger than what they actually specify of 6,200 milliamps. In this battery, I repeated the same test and it went down another 327 milliamps. 
bringing the total to 6,027 milliamps. This battery is spot on. The key difference being with the Huvu, 63.4% of its what I consider usable voltage is between 3.6 and 4.2 volts. With the HRB, 94.5% of your energy is between 3.6 and 4.2 volts. Regardless of the discharge rate, in this case, it doesn't seem to matter. Not all batteries are created equal and not all manufacturers create their batteries equal. I'm sure there are 120 C discharge batteries that perform great. In this case, these are going back. I do not recommend these at all. I don't have a lot to compare these to, but these to me are performing very well. I have 20 cycles on this and they're still performing just as well. The internal resistance is just as low. I will put a link for both of these batteries in the description. You can buy these if you'd like. I'm gonna put the description for these in there just so you know not to buy them. I definitely don't recommend them. But if you do have these batteries, let me know what results you're getting from them. I have seen a lot of other YouTubers make videos on how nice these batteries are. I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe they've never performed a test like this, but from what I see, these are terrible. Not worth the money. In fact, these actually cost less money. I got a pair of these for $59.99. And I will also say that perhaps I just had a bad battery and this was a good battery. Both of these batteries did come in pairs and I repeated the test on both pairs of batteries and with the same results in both tests. So I have to say that it was consistent. If you like this video, please subscribe, help support the channel. I'm going to do a lot more battery comparisons in the future and we're also going to have a lot more videos on the Arm of Felony, the Arm Outcast 8S and also the Arm of Fire team that I have as well. All awesome vehicles so far. I'm having so much fun with them, and I do not know why I waited so long to get into surface vehicles. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.